Today, I'm back with Through the Ages for one final flourish before the launch of Battlefield 1. This is the penultimate episode, and I've got a great weapon for all of you today. An American adaptation of a Belgian light machine gun, this weapon has been in service with the American military since 1984. It provides a heavy volume of pain with a fast fire rate and good accuracy, close to that of a rifle. This weapon is widely applauded by those who use it. Today, we're taking a look at the M249 Saw. The M249 is the American-made variant of the FN Mini-Me, and it's manufactured in the United States by a subsidiary of FN Herstal. It features a quick-change barrel, allowing the gunner to replace it on the fly should it overheat or get jammed, and it features the ability to fire from linked ammunition, that's its standard, or Stanag magazines, commonly used on the M4 carbine or the M16 assault rifle. This can come especially useful in case of emergency where perhaps ammunition is limited. Just before I continue, I have a sponsored message from App Bounty. They'll reward you with gift cards for Xbox, PSN and Steam, various other platforms, simply for downloading and trying out free apps. Whether you're on iOS or Android, you can take part and get some cool rewards for spending some of your time there. Just head to appbounty.net the link's in the description along with instructions. Enter the code WESTY with a capital W to get yourself started and download the first offer. App Bounty can be accessed from lots of places all over the world and you get to pick the rewards that you want. After you've downloaded the apps and you've got your credits into your account, you can delete the apps if you want to, save some space on your smartphone. Something there if you want to take part and build yourself up towards an Xbox or PlayStation card for your account. Head over to appbounty.net and use code WESTY to get yourself started. As I mentioned, links in the description. This gun has seen a lot of use during the Battlefield series. I've got a full episode for you today, and we're starting off with my favourite, Bad Company 2. Here, the M249 only appears in the multiplayer, and as with all LMGs, it's locked into the support class. It's the second weapon to be unlocked through the ranks, and it requires 1,100 support XP to get it unlocked. Its high rate of fire puts it closer to weapons, like the MG3, where its bullet damage is lessened to compensate for the higher number of bullets that it can spit out. Firing at 800 rounds a minute, it can compete with a lot of assault rifles at medium range, and through a relatively passive recoil pattern, this thing can more than hold its own against multiple targets. Fed by a 200 round box magazine as well, and you can get plenty of killing done before it's time to reload, and you're unlikely to ever run out of ammo before you die anyway. The weapon does feature some good longer range capabilities, but you will need to learn how to tap fire it effectively. Obviously, the further a target is away, even the low recoil of this weapon will look rather severe, but small bursts with the ACOG sight should help you keep things locked down. The role of the support player is always to lay down the suppressive fire anyway, so if a pesky sniper has got your squad stuck behind cover, it's worth taking the risk and spraying those bullets to keep the sniper off of you while your squad can move out. You're the guy with the bandages and the defibs in Bad Company 2 as well, so keeping that suppressive fire going for long enough to stop enemies returning is essential. Then you can run out and pick your buddy up. Overall, this weapon in Bad Company 2 is an effective one as long as you know your role in the team. It's time to move on to Battlefield 3 now, where it's widely considered to be one of the most versatile LMGs in the entire game. Battlefield 3 was, as I've said in many previous videos, an awesome infantry shooter, and the M249 fits in here like a charm. Again, it's issued to the support kit, and it's the first LMG to be given after the default weapons for each faction 
in the class. You'll need 11,000 support XP to unlock it, and it comes default equipped with a bipod, fitting the role quite nicely. Now in this game, the suppression mechanic really becomes something to be aware of. We all know it was extremely powerful at knocking off other people's aim, and the role of the LMGs, more so than any other weapon, is to suppress targets. The M249 is a perfect weapon for this all round, and its stats reflect that. An 800 round rate of fire slamming 556 rounds downrange out of the 100 round box magazine. Absolutely delicious. Because it's the 556 round, which are more commonly found in assault rifles, the M249 keeps its low recoil profile that we saw in Bad Company 2, and it makes it a competitive weapon when fighting in close quarters. If you consider the rate of fire as well, even though those bullets do less damage than some of the other machine guns, this thing can compete with any other automatic weapon really nicely. If you equip the extended magazine attachment, that 100 round box mag becomes a 200 round box, and you can really start to lay down the lead. The M249 does suffer from some horrible spread though, so hitting targets at longer ranges can be very difficult, but if you use that inaccuracy to your advantage by suppressing targets, knowing that you're not going to hit them, you may give your squad the chance to relocate on the map and move up on the enemy. Sometimes it's all about knowing how to utilize the weakness of your weapons in Battlefield 3 as well as its strengths. Even if you know you're not going to succeed at certain ranges, exploit the heavy suppression system, lay down fire and relocate to a better position where you might stand a chance. It's time to move on to Battlefield 4 now, and the M249 got somewhat lost in the game's single player. Here in Battlefield 4, unfortunately, the decision was made to lock the M249 into the single player and make it a requirement for you to play the final mission and unlock it in a certain way. Now, I'm sorry to say this, but I didn't unlock the M249 until two days ago before making this video because I haven't bothered playing the Battlefield 4 single player campaign. So my experience with this weapon is somewhat lacking. What I want to say though is this, and I've said it a couple of other times in this series so far, DICE, please don't lock weapons into the single player or co-op again. It's tedious and boring to play part of a game that really I don't have much interest in. Just don't do it again and we can still be friends. Beyond it being a single player unlock, the M249 functions very similarly to what it did in Battlefield 3, along with a lot of other weapons, as this series has shown. It's got the same 800 round rate of fire, modest recoil which can easily be controlled, and it comes default equipped with a 200 round box magazine for maximum power. It of course unlocks American attachments first, so getting the ACOG sight on there for longer range combat shouldn't be too difficult, but if you're only just starting out with it, then the iron sights aren't too hard to use. Because of my limited time with the weapon, it's hard for me to say if this gun is better than the one that I like the most, which is the MG4, and it's comparable to that as well. But overall, I just love the MG4, and I'm sorry to say that the M249 won't be taking its place as my go-to LMG in Battlefield 4. So there you have it, the M249 through the ages. I'd say it was probably at its most unique in Bad Company 2, and actually where I preferred it the most. Just because there were less weapons in that game, everything felt a little bit more unique overall. So when you were using it, it definitely felt like you were using the M249, but I think it became most useful in Battlefield 3, what with that suppression mechanic and the way that you can exploit it. It was definitely a write-off in Battlefield 4 though. I mean, it's just taken me shy of three years to be bothered to unlock it. That's enough evidence, surely, for DICE not to bother locking weapons away in the single player ever again. Thank you very much for watching. I've got one final episode of Through the Ages coming next weekend on a weapon that's seen use quite a bit all the way through the franchise. I just want to say a massive thank you to everyone who watches this series. It's been so much fun to make and seeing all of you getting involved down in the comments, what with going back and playing older titles, it brings back so many memories. 
I've got a replacement series coming for Battlefield 1, which I hope you'll really like. It's a similar style, but obviously suited to the new game. I've got to put some final touches to it, but I'm hoping to get it all sorted for a couple of weeks after the launch. It'll be my Sunday series as well, so make sure you look out for it. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.